Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. Today, we'll be looking at the Ninth Legion, the Blood Angels. In the next video, now how to build a Legion series. Hopefully, this is useful not only to those interested in the Ninth, but for all Legion players, giving them an understanding of the concepts behind army building in Horus Heresy, and an idea of what each Legion can bring to the table. I hope you enjoy. A quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate link in the description. The Blood Angels, savage yet artful, brilliant in warfare, but cursed with an all-consuming rage. A legion whose part in the heresy is both glorious and tragic. The Blood Angels story, both before and during the heresy, is a fascinating one, saved by their beloved Primarch whose life is cut short by a chaos fueled Horus. They are certainly one of the best looking legions on the table, and come with a fantastic selection of units. So. Let's get into it. Now, today we're doing something a bit different. I've got the one and only Blood Angel Master, Dean Morris, here to talk to me about Blood Angels after a fan requested it. Would you like to say hi, Dean? G'day all. Uh, thank you to that one fan who requested it. <laughs> it was and just one. It was just one, but that's all it takes to, 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 move, uh, to move us. Um, but no, thank you for having me on. Uh, Blood Angels have always been a passion of mine. They were my very first uh, Legion army way back in the... Uh, the, the initial days of Horus Heresy V1, um, and I've always stuck with them. They've always done very well for me. Awesome. So we'll follow the usual route. Uh, it'll be a bit different today, a bit more banter, a bit more backwards and forwards, because I've got Dan here, so I don't want to tell him what to say. It'll be more, more interesting to see what comes out of his mouth uh, when he isn't scripted. Interesting, not necessarily good. But we will start with the Age of Darkness box set, like we always do. Dean, is it worth it to grab an Age of Darkness box set for Blood Angels? I will say yes, um, because... Uh, yes, so... Uh, we'll get into it a bit long, uh, a bit further on, but Blood Angels, in my mind, broadly fit into one of one of two kind of playstyles: deep strike everything and lots of jump packs flying around, or not. Mm. Um, and it does lean more towards the not the the more traditional Marine force. But that being said, um, with all those Mark Six Marines, the uh, Terminators, the uh, Spartan and the Dreadnought, you can all make use of that very easily in any Blood Angel list. Don't forget those wonderful Praetors. I will forget those wonderful <laughs> Praetors uh, because none of them have jump packs. And you know what? They're I'm too just, chunky. They're too they're, chunky. They're too, chunky. They're, they're too large. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I like my um, my Marines a bit more uh, light and <clears throat> ready for the fight. Uh, but hey, look, with that amount of Marines, you can turn them into special weapons, heavy weapons, are uh, you know, uh, either... 3D print some uh, some jump packs and some close combat weapons, or you use your uh, your bits box to get some assault marines out of them if you wish. Uh, there's so much you can do with Mark Six um, that you get. You you uh, you're definitely getting your value worth there. Definitely with the dreadnought in there. Now, of course, the Blood Angels have their their own special dreadnought, and we'll talk a bit more about that, I'm sure, when we're talking about a certain right of war. Uh, is there a clever way to convert? Or have you seen some good files for 3D printing something to chuck on the back of the box set Age of Darkness dreadnought to turn it into a whatever that name is of that jump dreadnought? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have actually. Uh, I've seen I've seen some some conversions where they use obviously the two close combat weapons to either give them the claws or the dreadnought close combat weapons, which that, that, that dreadnought can take. Um, but I've actually seen like big Mark II uh, jump packs, like mm. scaled up to dreadnought size and put on the back. So it just looks like a giant entombed assault marine who just never stopped charging despite <laughs> the fact he died. Fantastic. Is that with the single thruster coming out the back? Is oh, no, 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 no. That's with the dual thrusters at the back. But yeah, you could do mm. the single thruster of the Mark IV yeah, uh, maybe jump yeah. packs. Actually, oh, I'd be very interested to see if they do do Mark VI jump packs, what they will look like. Mm. Um, because they will obviously look you know, in my mind, different from the Mark IVs and the Mark IIs. Yeah, are they similar? And, and the Mark III. Are they similar to just Mark VII? Mm, I don't know. We, we don't. I, 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 we don't in know. fact, I don't know that I've ever actually seen artwork of Mark VI jump packs, but yeah. I, I, I could be wrong. It could be out there. Uh, will we ever see it? Maybe not. Maybe. I mean, GW have... <laughs> Tease so many units they can release in 2023, uh, and Assault Marines were not one of them. More tanks. They've listened to the people, and the people want more tanks. Is, Plastic yeah. tanks. Lord of War tanks, specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can get a few more of them. That'd be great. But we deviate. We deviate. Back into it. All right, so the box set... Definitely worth it. Uh, all those Mark VI, chucking some 3D print printed until we actually get some plastic jump packs for Mark VI. 3D printed jump packs onto the back of those seems great. Dreadnought, always useful. The Prey Doors, sometimes not. Uh, look, if you're, if you're running a Day of Sorrows list, so you don't need your, your independent characters 
jumping down, uh, then I think they could be more useful in that kind of right of war. A hundred percent. Like if you even need a chaplain or a master of signals or something, which could be quite useful in a Dave Sorrows list that you're not necessarily jumping or you can't deep strike in. Mm. Um, yeah, then you might have a master of signals or a, yeah, a siege breaker or something to, to hide with artillery. Yeah, so you can make use of them. Can make use of them. The guy with the axe, he's definitely got those skulls. He's a nice blood angel kind of, kind of theme and motif. So it fits nicely. Not an issue at all. So do you think, uh, can you just rely rely on plastic at the moment for, for heresy blood angels or do you need to get into those forge world units so my blood angels army was no forge world it was only um oh well, sorry obviously it's forge world sorry no um elite units or, or, or blood angel only units it was only assault marines uh you know dreadnoughts land speeders all that kind of like base stuff that everyone else could took the, the fact that there were blood angels was what um gave them that edge Nowadays, however, in in um, version two or horror version two point oh, I actually think you need to rely a bit more on your on your forge world units or yeah. or your special units to 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 really put the hurt on the enemy. They're just so good. Uh, they're they're just outrageous. All of them. All of them are good. There's there's four um, Blood mm, Angel specific mm. units, and each one of them uh, brings something pretty fantastic to the table. So yeah, I think resin definitely worth it. Uh, when you're looking at a Blood Angel army, the the box set will get you started. Uh, but looking to forge well to, to start getting some of those more interesting and spicy units for the Blood Angels is, is definitely necessary. Uh, so that's that's the Age of Darkness box set chat. Uh, pick one up, it'll do you great. Add some Forge World to it and you've got yourself an army. Um, there's very different Blood Angel armies. We'll get to those in the Rite of War. But for now, let's talk about the Blood Angel's special rule and the impacts on army building. Dan, do you want to give me a bit of a rundown on the Blood Angel special rule in Carmine Fury? So, yeah, as I said before, their the rule in Carmine Fury is all models, with, all the Blood Angel models on a turn they charge will get uh, plus one to the dice roll to wound. So if they normally would need a four plus, you know, marine on marine violence, a four plus to wound, they need a three. And it goes, you know, all the way down. This is a downgrade in my <laughs> mind from um, from version one, which it was very similar, but they got it all the time. So whether they charge the third or fourth or fifth round of combat, they would just constantly get it. Now they only get it when they charge, putting it in my mind at the bottom of the assault only, um, right? Uh, sorry, uh, Le Legion special rules. Um, but it's fine. It, it's we, what it is. You can still do a lot of damage with it, even though it doesn't really have a lot of um, uh, effect with like you know power fists or anything that would normally wound on a two plus anyway. Yeah, it's such a shame. Or, or uh, although you know, uh, power fists against dreadnoughts instead of a three, they're now on a they're now on a two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So hey, hey, it it hey. is it is true. <laughs> there is always some utility. Always some utility. But, yeah, bit of a short stick for, in my mind. Um, uh, there is a second part. Yes, there is a second part. A widely used very uh, second part. <laughs> Uh, in addition, any vehicle, any Blood Angels vehicle um, that makes a ram attack increases the strength of any hit in inflicted by one to a maximum of ten. I have never rammed. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, in my, uh, Usually what happens is if I've got a vehicle with weapons, I fire the weapons. If I've got a vehicle with no weapons, uh, it's a rhino and it generally isn't going to do great on a ram, even with plus one. But... Who knows? I, I may ram more in this edition now that I've got a, a plus one. You may. And I have been rammed before. It has... <laughs> in a game of heresy. Uh, it has happened. It did take out a Galvor back out of nowhere. It was shocking. Uh, I didn't see it coming. It was pretty amazing. So maybe... I don't know. Ramming meta. Maybe it's in there. Keep it in mind. Blood Angels do it, do it okay. Sons of Horus do it better. Uh, Sons they are the ramming God. masters. Do, do not get me started on Sons of Horus <laughs> getting a better... It, the flip side of the, of the um, Legion special rule, but better. But in better. every way. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to nope. talk about how that special rule impacts army building for Blood Angels. So mm -hmm. you've got your plus one strength on the charge. What does that mean for units you want to take in your army? So I, I think it, it really does lean towards, obviously, a close combat focus. Now, what that does mean is potentially your tactical marines, you might give them bayonets or chain bayonets because you want to take advantage of that in Carmine Fury. It means on the charge, you will win peer, you know, tactical versus tactical or peer on peer marine violence uh it, and you know it means that your your stronger units your more combat focused units will have that additional um uh, that additional ability to wound on the charge it also means that you can hurt stuff like dreadnoughts you would normally hurt on a six you're now hitting on a five that's mm -hmm. double the chances of being able to hurt uh, hurt a dreadnought with with you know a, a crack grenade or something so it can be quite useful um in those kind of fights uh, against automata as well that high toughness kind of stuff 
um, Garvel back, etc. Mm. I think Crackman eggs would all, would already be they'd be on a th- four, yeah, because uh, they're strength six against seven to seven. But then they still get their save, so it's probably better just yeah. But look, you're looking you're, for those fives. Yeah, you're already hitting. Yeah, you're already hitting. Yeah, so true. Uh, yeah, look, uh, I think it also gives you the opportunity to take some weapons you might not take in other armies. So mm. Terminators, we see them so common now with Powerfist uh, in a lot of the mm. armies, just because those two to wounds are so spicy. Um, giving. Your Terminators, other kinds of weapons, uh, power axes have come a bit cheaper, um, and they're they're still now wounding on twos mm-hmm. uh, against Marines. So it, it opens up your weapon options certainly in, in other units that are that might be common across assault armies. Um, this probably and and it's everything too. It's not just infantry. Uh, so dreadnoughts in mm-hmm. particular, anything that can fight in close combat is is looking pretty pretty spicy. Dreadnoughts in this army do do pretty well. Yeah, but let's be fair. If any, if you're fighting with a dreadnought and it doesn't have a twos to wound, you're basically fighting. I don't know Angron. Yeah, or other dreadnoughts. No, even other dreadnoughts. Mm. Maybe tough to seven. So true. I take it all back. I take it <laughs> well, all back. If you're, if you're fighting a, a Sansa Horus Dreadnought, you're wondering when you're going to do. That's right? it. If you're coming up against Sansa Horus, you want to be running some Blood Angel Dreadnoughts. There you go. Meta. There's a little meta insight for you. Keep that in mind. Uh, wonderful. All right. So mostly infantry is what we're talking about here. Um, lots of them. Uh, assault Marines, great, because you really want to get that charge off. So you want to be building this army around getting the charge off. Uh, means transports. Um, if you're not deep striking, uh, drop pods are no good. Uh, don't, don't, don't even think about it. Um, we, we won't get into the rant on that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's faster units that you want to get into assault. And they're the only ones really that are going to shine in a Blood Angel army. Um, if you're looking to, to make the most out of that special rule. Mm. So, now, let's get into some some deep, deep chats about army building. Uh, and let's start looking at this Rite of War. So, there are two Blood Angels Rites of War. We're going to start with the undoubtedly more popular, uh, the Day of Revelations. Not necessarily more powerful, uh, but look, every Blood Angel army I've fought so far, is, a, is and that's three, three different Blood Angel armies in my time, uh, is cracking out Day of Revelations. So, do you want to not read it out for us? Give it a rundown of what Day of Revelations is doing. Yeah, so, um, and, and, and the reason Day of Revelation was so popular is because... At, out of the two in Horus Society V1, it was the one that worked. Day of Sorrows really didn't work well. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't was well written. Um, so Day of Revelation was very overpowered. How it works is, um, effectively, it's a deep strike. Um, you're, you're deep striking all of your deep strike capable um, units. So all your assault marines that can deep strike must deep strike. Um, your Crimson Paladins, which we'll get into later. A- anything with, deep, with the deep strike assault um, rule. The, how it works is you pick a turn two to four, um, and at the start of your turn, you place down a token. You can place it anywhere on the board, including your opponent's um, deployment zone. It's at the start of the game, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, start, yeah, of, the game, start yeah, of the game. Yeah, yeah start of the game. Um, you place it down at the turn. You indicate whether that's two. Let's be honest; it would almost always be two. <laughs> you bring down your first unit, and it must deep strike within six inches of that token, but it doesn't scatter. That's right. And if it can't, everyone's like, ooh, I'm going to cover that token. That'll really get them. Uh, it doesn't work, people. They can they can then just deep strike anywhere else in the battlefield. Uh, it just means they do scatter, but they'll be fine. Uh, they'll be just fine. But if they can go within the token, uh, then yeah, it's within six inches, uh, does not scatter, which is just insane. Mm. Um, also, it's worth noting that unlike no- normal deep strike assaults, you don't roll the reserve. You, mm. just, you just get it on that turn. They just come down. Yep. Uh, but yeah, once that first unit's down, the rest of your army can come down within 12 inches of, uh, for, for following the normal deep strike assault rules, they come down within 12 inches of that initial um, unit and they all just come uh, pe- pepper pot down. Now, something to, to mind here, because you are deep striking, this is all about deep striking, uh, your, the enemy may bring Master of Signals and if they do and they've got their, their evil Vox caster thingy, whatever, uh, turned on, uh, you can be in trouble uh, mm-hmm. because the worst thing that can happen here is a disordered uh, deep strike. Um, is it called disordered deep strike? What's the word? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it is disordered. I think it is. Yeah, That's, yeah. You know the idea. It's where, where you roll a one usually and if you roll a one, you're in big trouble. Your units are, your enemy can put all units after the first pretty much anywhere they want. I think within 24 inches mm-hmm. on the table, uh, which is very dangerous for deep strike. It means your army scattered all over the place and your units aren't having an effect. Now, if they've got a master of signals and their vox is turned on to disrupt, it means that on a one, two, or three, uh, you can potentially have your units being flung across the board by your opponent, uh, and it completely throws you out. So, on a, essentially, if they've got a master of signals, 
uh, it becomes a 50% chance that this right of war goes horribly, horribly wrong. So just something to keep in mind. It is powerful, but it can go wrong. Um, it's worth noting that first unit that comes down is not affected by um, the it master of signals. He, he, they come down no matter what. So it comes down to with, if they do have a master of signals, maybe you want to place your biggest, most points intensive unit down to mm. make sure it gets down. And, um, and something just something to think about when building as well. Mm. It's probably worth when you're looking at what units you want to deep strike for the for your day of revelations. Probably having one really meaty big unit. It's probably a uh, Dawnbreaker cohort, a big one, mm. I dare mm. say. Um, and starting with that and and chucking a chaplain in there, chucking a, a Praetor in there, whatever that looks like, and that's what comes down first. Um, and then your other deep striking units, maybe a couple of smaller assault marine squads that are there for capturing objectives. Objectives, maybe some Crimson Paladin um, with a with a heavy weapon that can still have a bit of an impact if they're if they're flung across the board and they have line as well, so they can search for other objectives. Wait, they don't have line. That's in the other one. Sorry, take that back. <laughs> take that back. Um, so yeah, so just just think about when you're building this list out. Uh, really focus on making as dangerous and meaty as you can that first unit that you're going to put down. It, it's worth noting. Um, this is something that's kind of forgotten a little bit at the bottom. Um, all units in your detachment that are not deep striking gain fearless until the start of your second turn. So you do have first turn fearless, which is quite useful. It means that none of your stuff's going to run off the board no matter what happens to them what, before those deep strike units come down. That's right. And you want some units on the board uh, so that you don't lose the game. Uh, 100%. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun trick. Very required. So it actually, like, as far as army building, it may be worth going like a half-half. So a half traditional fire support kind of role for your marines and then the rest of your force is that close combat death from above kind of uh force so so you've got stuff on the table which you never know might be able to snipe out that um that master of signals first and, turn. yeah here's the one so and they're fearless too so you're not going to get pinned with these units that are on the board so heavy support squads um look here's here's a nice little here's a nice little spicy one for you so take a squad of lads cannons uh 10 10 always the right number of lads cannons to take then take a librarian right as a non-compulsory hq because you don't have to give him a jump pack and you stick him in there and you give him the psychic power where he gives precision on either a six or a five plus if you pass the psychic check to your unit of lads cannons take out that master of signals and your day of revelations is looking a lot better snipers do it too but i love sniping lads cannons because I'm a monster. I'm just not a good person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Charles and I have had many discussions about Laz cannons and and how many he takes and how I don't like them shooting me in the face. Um, but that you cannot deny their effectiveness, especially being able to take out targets of opportunity before the uh, the big deep strike. Um, as far as limitations, there's actually not many. Um, surprisingly, the only the only um, Limitation is your compulsory HQ choice, so whichever one of them you want, really, uh, has to have a jump pack, and anything with the deep strike special rule must deep strike. Um, so surprisingly, it is stuff like land speeders, uh, it is stuff like crimson paladins, it is stuff like um, the jet bikes. Yeah, jet bikes. Mm. Uh, the incandus. Oh, gonna oh. try that one right now. <laughs> incandus um, dreadnought that has the uh, the jump pack. Um, and the, the other limitation is you can't take anything that is immobile or any fortifications. But let's be fair, you, you didn't. Uh, you yeah. contempt in, in, in can in, in, in candius in candius. Oh, we're gonna get we're definitely butchered that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can actually. It's very easy to take a normal, like a half half normal force and then a deep strike force to to really use that combined arms tactics um, to, to to support one another in the fight. Definitely. And, uh, you know, pinning things before you arrive. Um, look, you get the extra chance to pin when you deep strike and, and Blood Angels ha do it a bit better um, because of Warlord trait that we'll talk about a little later. But having something like a Scorpius or a bunch of snipers on the board in that first turn to pin some units down before you then arrive. Oh, does that work? No, because in the next turn that you arrive, they won't be pinned anymore. Uh, yeah, no, true. Oh, it doesn't, unless you pin them as part of a shooting reaction. Spicy, spicy stuff because then they're pinned yeah, for that then as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, some recon marines, uh, set them up to capture those objectives as your, your force that's starting on the board. They're fearless, uh, and if they're doing shooting reactions or anything that chooses to shoot at you, you're then pinning it. So, let's say a heavy support squad decides to shoot at your recon marines, you pin them back in a shooting reaction. It now means they can't use their all specs to get a free shot at your deep striking force. Just Nonced. There's nonce to this Blood Angels army and some tricky things you can do. So just keep all that in mind when uh, when building out the army here. Uh, any units that you think are a must-take? I mean, it has to be the, the 
the Dawnbreakers, right? Well, I, I think it was a must-take, Assault Marines. Yep. Obviously, um, Assault Marines are going to be the core of your kind of deep strike force because they've got line. They're very cheap, uh, and, and they, come with, they come with jump packs and chainsaws. They're, 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 you've got everything you need and they can take you know one in five can take a power weapon you've got the power sergeant they're actually very economical mm. as far as their special units obviously we'll go into a bit later but the Dawnbreaker cohort as effectively veteran assault marines with close combat weapons two plus save weapon skill five just uh, they're, they're insane on the combat they're so good and they're only 25 points it's so cheap. It's such a what, steal. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it now. So we won't do a big unit breakdown later on. Mm-hmm. So we will talk about them as we go. Uh, um, so yeah, just Dawnbreaker cohorts. You're going to take a unit. You're going to take a unit of 10. I've seen I've seen two units of 10 uh, in an army. That didn't feel great. Uh, um, uh, but I, I think, get it. I think for me, one unit of 10 is very sufficient. Uh, Angel's Tears are another great unit, especially because they fulfill a, a role in an army you don't see a lot, which is... Um, fast fire support or, or, or maneuverable fire support. Uh, similar in the, in the idea of like kind of like Thalax, but their weapon, I think they're a lot more heavily armed. And obviously the um, Contemptor Incandius Dreadnought, which good. let's be fair, if you, you everyone's come up against Dreadnoughts, but having a Dreadnought deep strike in the front <laughs> of your lines is scary. And they're fast attack. Right. And they're fast attack. They're not going to take your elite spots that you want elite spots that you want your crimson paladins and your dawnbreakers and, and all kinds of other things taking up. They're fast attack, which is such an underutilized force organization slot mm-hmm. that to have extra dreadnoughts in there that deep strike is just madness, and it's so good. Um, yeah, can can recommend uh, on the angels tears. You're probably taking the assault cannons, right? Is that the go to? We'll, we'll get through the, the, the unit breakdown. Yeah, but yeah. yes, yeah. Well, no, no unit breakdown. We'll get to them in the war gear. Oh, war gear. We'll sorry, yeah. yeah. War, but yeah. but keep in mind, um, you know, they've got grenade launch. Uh, stock, uh, not stock, they come with Serpentia uh, stock, two of them. Grenade launchers are pretty good, um, but I think the, the assault cannons are the spicy pick there. For, for, for the amount of points, you can turn a you know a, a squad into a, a a 10-man squad into a 40-shot, just might as well be an A-10 warthog flying around, <laughs> um, shredding enemies, uh, and, and the amount of fire they do. And at the end of the day, they're still destroyers. You get them in combat, you've got rad mm-hmm. grenades to worry about, you've got, cha- you know, they've all got chainsawed stock, and yeah, the the Volkite Serpentius. You could take them with no weapon upgrades at all, just stock yeah. two, two still, Serpentis. Still four shots from me. Four shots, strength five. Like, yeah. they're, they're going to do some damage, yeah, and yeah. cheap as chips. Yeah, yeah, uh, with the flag rate. Uh, so, I mean, look- yep. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right. Um, the last thing I want to note for Day of Revelations is when it comes to HQ choices, uh, Praetors are great. Um, Zephon is is fantastic. Um, ish. He, 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 Frozen guns. Yeah. Frozen guns. No, I really like him as uh, as a secondary HQ, mm. not your Warlord. Yeah, fair. Um, because his Warlord trait just isn't that great. But as a duelist or as a close combat guy, especially maybe to uh, accompany your second assault squad, he is really good. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Very cheap and does a lot of damage. Yeah, Initiative 5 AP2 is is always good, um, no, no matter where you're getting it from. Um, but I think the, the key one that you want to take here, it's a chaplain. Uh, I would be shocked if almost all Blood Angel armies aren't taking Chaplain. They bring so much to the unit. Um, rerolling to hit is is fantastic through the hatred that they give out, um, but just the, the stubborn they bring to a unit as well. So a big unit of Assault Marines, perhaps, um, or even Dawnbreakers, because Dawnbreakers aren't stubborn. Um, and no, that's something not. to remember. So yeah, I think yeah. a Chaplain with your Dawnbreaker unit is is potentially a must mm-hmm. for this right of war. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the Day of Revelations. I think we've talked enough about that. You're deep striking, you're shooting, um, you're doing some great stuff. Next up, uh, it's a right of war that I think might actually win you more games through consistency and the ability to score victory points. Uh, and that is the Day of Sorrows. It doesn't have as much wow factor, as much punch and excitement as the Day of Revelations does. But if you are, <laughs> it's also not meaning that if you roll a one uh, when you deep strike, you're, you're losing the game. Uh, so that is the Day of Sorrows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly read through it uh, and give you an idea of what you're doing. Uh, so essentially, you can take Crimson Paladins as non-compulsory troops and they gain line which is wonderful. There's not a lot of rights of war out there that give line to really powerful units like that. So Crimson Paladins, extra strong Terminators that can deep strike natively and have line. Wonderful. Notably, can't deep strike in this list, just to, just to clarify while I'm throwing that word around. Um, that's a limitation I'll get into in a second. Uh, all models from the detachment using this right of war uh, gain the stubborn special rule while they have at least one model within six of an objective. Stubborn is amazing. It wins games. Leadership is so important in this edition. Uh, next up, 
Any unit made entirely of infantry, uh, which is part of the detachment, when reduced to 50% or less, uh, gains the heart of the Legion and hatred everything special rule. End line as well. Uh, so once your unit's below 50% and it happens because the enemy wants to kill you, uh, you just get all these bonuses. Feel no pain near objectives, stubborn and, you know, near objectives, uh, you've, stubborn, yeah, yeah, because of the, the other part, you've got hatred, so you're re-rolling to hits, and you're getting lines, so you're scoring objectives, and you're scoring victory points for, for other missions that don't have objectives, so good, it's just so good, it wins games, it's amazing, lasts for the remainder of the battle, once they're below 50%, so you just have these individual models from cheeky units running around, scoring you all kinds of victory points. Now, there are a bunch of limitations. Uh, essentially, you have to accept and issue challenges with characters. Uh, next up, infantry and cavalry uh, that have been reduced to 50% must charge. So it's your Blood Angels getting really angry uh, when they can. And nothing can deep strike subterranean assault or flanking assault. So essentially, you can't do any or, or even be placed in reserves. So everything's on the table, no shenanigans. Um, you're there and you're ready to fight a battle that you're you're pitched against um, because Day of Sorrows, it's all about fighting against the odds. So that's everything. Uh, Day of Sorrows, what kind of army do you want this to look like? I actually think that the, yeah, so, so <clears throat> the Age of Darkness box set really lends itself well to this mm. because what you want is... Because you can't deep strike your Terminators, like like your um, Crimson Paladins, who are now you know non compulsory troops with line, need to get there. Yeah. Uh, so you know maybe a, a Spartan unit, a, a Spartan with ten of them in it, mm. quite powerful, quite expensive too. <laughs> but also those normal cataphracty Terminators, um, ten of them with lightning claws or something, r running <clears throat> running in a Spartan would be very powerful. Allow you to get on an objective, um, and 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 hold it, especially once they get reduced to four models. They've got line five. It's fifty percent or oh, less. Fifty percent. There you go. Five yeah. models. Yeah. They, they, then they are able to hold objectives as well as hatred and everything else. And hatred is so good on mm. units with weapon skill four as well because oh. weapon skill four can be such a downer in this edition against certain units. So mm -hmm. getting hatred on those units is is just fantastic. Um, and, and as far as um, yeah, so there is some obviously some some strong limitations. Being forced to charge stuff um, could mean that you could be taken off an objective because mm. you're charging away from the objective onto an enemy. But if if they're not not able to, to get you off it, it's very hard to to knock off those last couple of miniatures or those last couple of models from a Blood Angel ta infantry squad or a tactical squad off the objective because um, now they're stubborn forever. Yeah, 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 for sure. So there, there's units you're not taking here that you would take otherwise. Um, you know, Dawnbreakers, once, when they're not deep striking, uh, can become pretty fragile to all those las cannons that we talked about out there. Look, they, they don't have an invulnerable, and that's their main weakness. So they are 2 plus A, but without an invulnerable, snipers, las cannons, anything AP2 related is really going to chew them if you're trying to jump them across the board. So they might be a leave at home, um, whereas the Crimson Paladins in a Spartan is probably a, a really good cornerstone for this army here. Um, same, same with the Assault Marines. You're probably leaving them at home as well. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe unit. You still want to get charges off there, right? Yeah, yeah. you're still Blood Angels. Maybe veterans. I actually think mm. veterans in um, standard sp uh, standard Land Raiders um, with, you know, you can take 10, 10 in there, tooled up to close combat. Um, they're tough. They're protected by the transport. You can give them an apothecary to keep them there longer. Um, once they suffer a few casualties, they're line as well. So you've got line stuff in your permanent deployment zone. But I think it actually um, it benefits a lot of those units you wouldn't normally take, like rapiers with um, with the laser destroyers or quad mortars, snipers, um, heavy support squads. Actually, for, uh, it can benefit a shooting army quite powerfully. Mm, yeah, because um, getting stubborn within those objectives, mm. um, and and as well as. Uh, the, not the hatred piece, uh, where am I? Uh, getting those feel no pains when you get hard of legion, when you blow 50%. Mm -hmm. Anything that you is just a big threat that your opponent's going to have to shoot back at that you know is going to be reduced suddenly becomes bigger and better. So yeah, rapiers definitely, heavy support squads for sure. Um, even, even support squads, um, mm. tactical support squads. You don't see them that often, but having them gain line halfway through your battle, is it just makes them so much better. Oh, absolutely, absolutely huge. Uh, and because... You know, you can suddenly get hatred at any point. You could turn a, a tactical squad with bayonets into something that can actually overwhelm your opponent. Um, mm. You know, with the charge, with the bayonet, with the rerolls to hit, and they're stubborn. 
they can be quite nasty and for a, a, a very economical price. Yeah, and the, the bigger you go with those tactical, uh, tactical squads as well, I think 20 is a great number here because once they're reduced to 50%, you've still got 10 of them left, so they're still going to do something. Mm-hmm. Whereas smaller units, once they get to 50%, not as much impact, so big, meaty units of, of 20 um, for, for both assault squads and tactical squads in this list mean that when those special rules do kick in and you start becoming more powerful, you've still got enough to carry the day uh, against bigger units as well. So that's that's a recommendation there. Um, when it comes to HQ, uh, we, we've talked about our special guy. We talked about Zephon before. Now, the Blood Angel's other special character is Raldron. Uh, now, Raldron is not so good uh, in your Day of Revelations lift because he's not deep striking, and you don't really want to bring a transport in that list because it's just getting to too many points that he can assault out to. But Raldron in a, in a Day of Sorrows list just becomes fantastic, and this is probably where you want to take him. Um, his Warlord trait, you get to pick. Now, Dean and I were talking about this before. Dean, do you want to talk a bit about his Warlord traits with Raldron? So, so um, Raldron's uh, Warlord trait is the Archean of Ar- Wisdom. Arcane? Arcane, I Archean, uh, some, mm. some Blood Angel word. Anyway, effectively, it allows him to take the Warlord trait from any Loyalist Legion and Loyalist Warlord trait. So you can't take a, a Loyalist Legion traitor one, but... Um, so. Of the one, there's a few good picks. There's a couple of Space Wolf ones, but I think it's Howl of the Death Wolf, which gives, um, for one turn, everything that charges plus one strength, which is really quite useful mm. uh, in this kind of list. But And again, it, it synergizes very well with your uh, with your already plus one to wound, giving you, you know, normal Marines twos to wound on another Marine. Uh, but what I think is really good, um, and, and is, is kind of a no-brainer pick, uh, for a lot of people, is the Solar Martial Warlord trait from Imperial Fists, which gives plus one weapon skill to him, to the Warlord and his unit against traitors, and also gives a free reaction for that unit in any phase of the game. Mm. Uh, but it has to be that unit. Yeah, so so you pretty much, you're chucking Raldron into a big unit of, uh, of Crimson Paladins uh, and just throwing them in a Spartan, some other uh, maybe veterans in some Land Raiders to support the Proteus, uh, going alongside them to make sure everything's smacking home at once, some Assault Squads, backing them up with some uh, some Tactical Sport and some Heavy Sport, and you got yourself a pretty a pretty good day of... Uh, day of uh, Revela- uh, Dave, sorry. Dave, sorry. <laughs> the different day. The other day. <laughs> the other day. A pretty the, good... Yeah. The Thursday. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A pretty good da- Dave, sorry's list, uh, and which obviously the, the Age of Darkness box set sets you up beautifully for. And and let's be fair, Raldoron hits like a, like a, uh, like a truck as well. He's got a a five plus a plus two strength, AP two, um, I think it's shred and a murderous strike five plus plus one strength. Oh, plus two. one strength. Yep, mastercrafted shred, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Murderous strike five plus. Anything instant death is always so good. And he's got furious charge too, so he's mm. actually hitting at strength seven and plus one to wound. So he could actually reliably take on a dreadnought probably. Goes up to strength eight on the charge because it's furious charge too. So he's up to six. Plus one for Blood Angels, plus one for his weapon. Ah, uh, no, no. So plus one to wound, not plus one strength. Oh, so true. So oh, it's seven. Yeah, you yeah. might, you might get that. Nah. If, if there's some way to, to factor in a destroyer into the unit or something like that, <laughs> maybe. It. Although, if he took um, a Howl of the Death Wolf, as said before, he would get plus one strength on the charge. So he would be strength eight on the charge. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, doubling out Marines even without Murderous Strike. So good at initiative. Amazing. Uh, so that's uh, that's Day of Sorrows. That's the two rights of war. That's how you kind of want to build your Blood Angels out. They're pretty flexible when it comes down to it. And you kind of want you want some assault and shooting to both of them. Um, you can go down the complete assault route. Wouldn't recommend it uh, in second edition. It's, it's going to hurt if you're not doing something in those first couple of turns. Um, so so built pretty balanced, really, Blood Angels when they come down to it. But they, they hit a bit harder, um, especially with their their legion specific units so to close out the uh, the review of the blood angels and how we build an army uh let's look at their war gear options warlord traits and advanced reactions and the impacts that they have so the war gear options pretty nice for the blood angels they come with some pretty interesting weapons dan do you want to talk a bit about them so uh the army of the blood angels uh let's go down to it so first up inferno pistols any blood angel um that has a plasma pistol can exchange it for a melter pistol effectively for no additional points now its range is quite short uh so it's only six inches range six inch range but apart from that it, it's pistol one but it's effectively a melter gun in, in all of the aspects one of the very well used parts of this is a dual melter moratat mm. which a lot of people take with a i've um, seen it i've seen it in play oh it, yeah it is out of control well it, it, it's uh 
it's rolling even more into the Moritat theme of go hard or go home. Mm. Because trying to get within six inches on a deep strike, you're either going to nail it right in front and hopefully uh, hit with enough melters to uh, to make a difference, or you're just going to not and get instantly murdered. <laughs> um, but it, in order, you know, for the opportunity to potentially get 12 melter hits on Dreadnoughts, on uh, Terminators, on Spartans or other super heavies, um, I take one. I just love it. Um, but yeah, it, it is a danger with that with that short range. Oh, and uh, point to note, it is almost impossible to get the melter shots off against Alpha Legion because they reduce the uh, range <laughs> even more, which means you you cannot physically get the uh, the extra melter hits at half range mm. against Alpha Legion. Yeah, because you have to be outside one inch. Very annoying. Yeah, so good. Uh, next thing, the thing that I'm very excited about is Perdition weapons. Now, in uh, version one, in the previous edition, you had only the Blade of Perdition, and it was only for independent characters. Um, now it's open up to basically everyone, everyone mm. with character. Um, so all your sergeants and such. It comes in four flavors. Uh, the common theme is they're basically power weapons, normal power weapons, except they all have plus one strength on, on their normal power weapon counterparts. They're all two-handed, and they all have Brutal 2. <laughs> for five points. To get, for, for to get five plus po- one strength in Brutal 2 for five, is amazing. For five points more than a power weapon yeah. on, on a sergeant or something, being able to go plus one with a power, you know, a power sword perdition, um, being able to go plus one strength, rending six plus and brutal two can pull off some really powerful hits uh even you know killing enemy hqs or take you know do, doing the damage to dreadnoughts uh, i personally like the axe of perdition because it's plus two strength and the blade of perdition as my two ones that being said i think the spear of perdition mm. being a um reach one power weapon uh, at plus one strength is very powerful as well allowing you to strike before the enemy and really get into them yeah, nice, fantastic. And last up, we have the Iliastus Assault Cannon. So we touched on this briefly before, that that's probably what you want to be giving your Angel's Tears. Um, it's like a regular kind of big Assault Cannon thing, um, but it's Assault for Rending 6+, plus and it does have Malfunction. So it uh, it does get hot when you're making a shooting reaction. Uh, keep that in mind. I've had them used against me, and they weren't taking the Gets Hot, so I won't forget that again. Mm-hmm. Um, but these are just so nice, and what I really love them on is Dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts with two claws, each with a Iliastus Assault Cannon in there, because even though it's a little bit expensive, you're still getting eight shots with just so much close combat power still locked in there. So they, they have use. Um, you can give them to Dreadnoughts. What else can you give them for? Chuck them on some Legion Predators? Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. You can give it to really anything that can normally take a heavy flame. I can yep. replace it with a, an Assault Cannon. But yeah, going back to... I used to take them a fair bit. I don't take them anymore because of the sheer cost. Mm. Now, you can, uh, how it works is you can replace a heavy flamer with them on, on, any, on any, any kind of vehicle, but it's 20 points. Oh, yeah, it's, expensive. Uh, it's, it's very expensive. Um, for infantry, it's only 10 points, which I consider to be a worthwhile investment. But 20 points for me is just a bit, bit, bit far over. Um, on stuff like Leviathans, I would probably just take the, um, the Volkite... Um, guns instead of instead of the assault cannons mm. on vehicles yeah uh, other heavy weapons uh on dreadnoughts i'd be more tempted to take uh melter guns or grav graviton guns i think are the um the big one in this edition um rather than the assault cannon just it's just too expensive for you know and, and you can't even use them during um well you can use them you can't really use them during reactions because of that uh mentioned malfunction rule yeah so true so true all right very good so those are the war gear options flood angels uh, the main takeaways there being you want sergeants and you want them with perdition weapons because they're fantastic uh and and things like apothecaries as well yeah yeah oh, apothecaries yeah. tech marines <laughs> oh, yeah. all them can have um can have them as well a, a, a cheeky apothecary with a perdition weapon is is very surprising to your opponent does work uh, and you want apothecaries as well. Take apothecaries uh, in your Blood Angel armies, people. Uh, and then the Inferno Pistol with the Moritat Ridiculousness there. So Warlord Traits is the next one. Uh, and there's there's one main one that I want to talk about here. And that's when you're running your Day of Revelations army. Uh, I think the Incarmine Paladin uh, Warlord Trait. And I'll just quickly go through it. Essentially, it gives Fear 1 to your Warlord uh, if the enemy has the Traitor Allegiance. But more so, as you start, killing, uh, as you start winning combats, I sh- should say... Uh, the fear goes up to a maximum of four, which is du- just not a 12 inch bubble of fear. Anything is good, but fear two, fear three, fear four is, is going to win you games because things are going to run away and they're just going to melt within a 12 inch bubble of, uh, of your warlord there. So 
just fantastic. I love it. And, and, and just being able to stack it with... Because one of the rules Dawnbringers have is when they deep strike anything within six inches of their final location suffers neg one to the pinning test. Mm. Now, you, you stack that with the the Crimson... Uh, sorry, not Crimson. In Carmine Paladin as well, that's neg two. If it's e- night time... If it's night fight, oh, that's neg, neg three. three. <laughs> even even normally stoic Marines mm. will turn tail and run or get pinned yep. before the uh, inevitable slaughter. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you want. You On your deep strike, you really want to be pinning people so they're not shooting you up uh, after you've done it. So chucking in Carmine Fury into a unit of Dawnbreakers with your Warlord is just... It's fantastic. It gives you that bubble around them, six and then out to 12. <laughs> Just so good. And, and and think about it this way. If you're in the middle of your opponent's lines with a few one bubble, the rest of your army, which can is, you know, obviously shooting as well, can make use of that as well, not just the deep strike. So you, you, your enemy has this force in the middle of their lines, which is causing the rest of their army to degrade leadership slightly. Could be what forces them off the board, for, falls them back, makes them makes you that, lin- that that real pain in the ass that they have to get rid of. Yeah, forces yep. them to dance your tune. Definitely. Um, for a uh, day of sorrys, if you're not taking Raldron, and I think you should, uh, but if you don't, the Paragon of Unity is probably your go-to there. Um, so that's giving plus one leadership uh, to anyone within the line of sight. So just good. Leadership's great. Do it. It's fantastic. Um, the Crimson Paladins don't need it though because they're leadership ten, which and I stubborn. found out yesterday. And stubborn. Yes. Ah, oh, just amazing. <laughs> Uh, very good. There's one final thing I want to talk about. That's the advanced reaction. Um, it really just drives home the infantry piece. Essentially, it's called the Wrath of Angels. And what it means is that when you're shot at, you can not only get shrouded 5+, plus, but you then get to charge. Um, so good. It really drives home that infantry piece where you want those assault marines, uh, things of getting bonuses to those longer charges when your opponent's trying to, trying to shoot you away. You might be 10 inches away, but if you've got plus whatever, one or two to your charge, um, you then get to roll it and you're getting your units in without your opponent getting a shooty reaction on that charge. So I think the advanced reaction is fantastic. Drives home what we've been talking about, that this is really an infantry-based army that can make some nice use of uh, dreadnoughts and, uh, and transports, but infantry is the linchpin to make sure you're making the most of your blood angels. Yeah, probably not Probably not the best legion for an armoured breakthrough kind of force. <laughs> not um, so much. But, you know, a, a predator here and there, a Sakarian here and there does very well in this yeah, list. Scorpius. <laughs> Yes, never, never get the Scorpius. Charles's yeah. favorite Scorpiuses <laughs> do do very well against basically everything. Yeah, they're good in everything. Just take one, take one all the time. Uh, and that's that's pretty much everything for the Blood Angels today. So, departing final words about your your precious Blood Angels. I so for my for Blood Angels, not my Blood Angels. They're everyone's <laughs> Night Legion. Um, I actually think they're in a better place overall. Um, the 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 lists I used to take in the last edition were very mono build. You know. It was Day of Revelation. It was built like Day of Revelation. I did try to make it a little bit combined arms, but it was Day of Revelation. Uh, nowadays, you can build a Ninth Legion force in so many different ways, and it will do work. Uh, but you, I think you do need to invest in those special units. Um, but we have some great ones. Uh, last edition, there were there were some units that were okay. Now, all four of them are really good at their job, um, good for their points, and will do work for you. All in all, I cannot wait to get some some more games in with my Blood Angels once I finish painting my Dark Angels, <laughs> um, and see what they uh, what they're capable of. Yeah, fantastic! So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if there's anything you think we've missed about the Blood Angel that bears mentioning, please put it in the comments below. But importantly, make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for Heresy.